怎么又晚了？这诊所太远了，这里多开几间就好了。政府里需要有我们的人，需求才会被听到。哎，你这……哎，你们两个都对，可光说有什么用呢？填好二零二零年的人口普查，就可以协助公共资金的分配，比如地方医疗，更多的政府席位。想要给自己发声啊？赶紧上网填，打电话也行。请上二零二零 census.gov 完成普查。This segment is brought to you by Asian Cultural Alliance. Democratic societies often harbor zero tolerance for academic dishonesty in the realm of politics. Integrity, especially academic integrity, is thought to be the ultimate test of quality for a politician. But what happens when someone who engaged in academic misconduct is the head of a country? The thesis mystery presented here may very well be the first of its kind. It involves the current president of Taiwan. Make no mistake, the thesis scandal here has evolved into a battle for political power. Those currently in power have employed their authority to classify relevant documents and conceal information. Collusion is not only happening in Taiwan but also in faraway London. The easiest way to prove someone graduated from a certain school is to directly connect them to that school. In other words, request official records from the school that issued the degree. This is basic knowledge. Everyone here saw the information posted on LSE's official website, which also served to draw lines between the president and the school. Time and time again, the presidential office refers to information posted on the LSE website that says Tsai is a graduate of the school. They say that the LSE website is solid proof that Tsai Ing-wen's degree is legitimate. However, Dr. Huan Lin discovered that there is a reason why the presidential office relied so heavily on such information. But before moving forward, we must ask: Are claims on a website enough to substantiate a person's degree? In May of 2019, Dr. Lin sent letters to the LSE's many libraries asking how someone could borrow a copy of Tsai Ing-wen's thesis. At the time, he asked the University of London's Diploma Production Office to verify the authenticity of the three diplomas Tsai showed to the public. This initial correspondence unveiled a few key pieces of evidence. First, the library says it never received a copy of Tsai Ing-wen's thesis. Second, 107 people graduated from LSE with PhDs in 1984. Only Tsai and one other student's thesis are missing from the school's library. However, the latter had their degree revoked because they were caught plagiarizing. Lastly, the diploma that Tsai said she reapplied for in 2015 was different from reissues that the University of London's Diploma Production Office handed out. Shortly after providing Dr. Lin with such pivotal information, the manager of the University of London's Diploma Production Office stopped all correspondence with him. Instead, the London School of Economics sent a media relations manager to communicate with Dr. Lin. Contrary to what the Diploma Production Office said, the media relations manager sent the following letter on June 6, 2019. 
The records of both the London School of Economics and Political Science and the University of London confirm that Tsai Ing-wen was awarded a PhD in law in 1984, and the student records show that the thesis was submitted. This letter represented a complete turnaround in what the school told Dr. Lin before. On June 19, 2019, Dr. Lin reached out to the University of London's Data Protection and Information Compliance Manager. Dr. Lin, with the help of the UK Freedom of Information Act, requested information related to Tsai's thesis. The Data Protection Manager told Dr. Lin that the school library never received Tsai Ing-wen's thesis. The manager even said that the entry in their ethos database cataloging the existence of Tsai's thesis wasn't even created until June of 2015. Everything points to someone lurking in the shadows trying to hide the truth. The Taiwanese public began raising questions surrounding the first diploma Tsai Ing-wen showed in public. Why did a diploma from a 1984 graduate bear the signature of the school's 2015 chancellor? Without asking, Dr. Huan C. Lin preemptively received a response from a University of London external relations staff member, almost as if someone knew there would be suspicion. The response said the following. As all replacement requests generally fall within a 20-year period, an officer of the University of London did respond to a general inquiry to state that the replacement diploma would carry the same date and signatures as the original diploma. This was an error. It was only subsequent to this reply that the date of the award falling outside the 20-year period. The external relations person also denied the diploma production office's original statement, much like how the media relations manager denied a school library employee stating it had never had a copy of Tsai's thesis. What prompted the University of London and the London School of Economics' communication departments to react so strangely? Right now, we can be sure that people in the communication departments of the University of London and LSE, as well as someone with permissions to edit the Ethos thesis database, are cooperating with Tsai Ing-wen to hide the truth. LSE's Public Relations Office isn't the only one interfering with our thesis investigation. There is also Shi Fang Long, a woman who claims to be a former co-director of LSE's Taiwan Research Program. Si says that she has dual doctorates from the London School of Economics. She once gave a speech at the Taiwanese Association of America. A video of that speech started circulating online. The video was very telling as to who she was. Taiwan the flag yeah. instead of ROC the flag. Yeah. I mean, this is. Um, we should try our effort to make our own Taiwan flag. Yeah. The which flag yeah. is stand for Taiwan? Which one? But, but because for this young student, uh, they are very handy um, to show Taiwan as a country. So they uh, currently is the national flag yeah. is ROC flag. Yeah. So now they only took ROC. But we need to um, create the Taiwan, Taiwan the flag. But we need to create one. Oh, um, this question is is I mean um, is dependent upon us. Okay, thank you. We've mentioned Shi Fang Long a few times before. When this thesis mystery first began, Taiwanese media outlets said she was a representative of LSE. She always seemed to have an official response for every question, almost as if she were trying to misguide public opinion. On June 21, 2019, Taiwanese newspaper Liberty Times published an article with the headline, LSE Director Reveals Truth Surrounding Tsai's Thesis. The body of the article said the following. Recent rumors have alleged that President Tsai Ing-wen's doctoral thesis is phony and plagiarized. However, co-director of LSE's Taiwan Research Program, Ms. Shi Fang Long, took to Facebook earlier to address public concern. She says that LSE will soon have the final word after spending many man-hours and resources looking into Tsai's thesis. 
lecturer pointed out that people only discuss Tsai's thesis before a presidential election. Taiwan's state-run central news agency continued to refer to Shi as a representative of LSE all the way until September 19, 2019. However, the truth of the matter is the LSE Asia Research Center's Taiwan Research Program closed in 2016. Shi's name is absent from any and all LSE directories. Our investigation team confirmed this when it traveled to LSE in 2019. This research program office mm. here in the LSE? No. No, nothing. Just that you found that in the website. There is really nothing they found that in the website. And the address out to the street, it does work. Yeah. Yeah. That I will tell them. Okay. Okay. Thank you. Yeah. Nothing as in, we don't. Um, we don't think we have got Taiwan the okay. department here yeah. because it's it's just in the website, mm -hmm. but nothing else. After President Tsai was elected in 2016, LSE congratulated her on their webpage. They pointed out that an alumnus of LSE was elected president. This information is still on their website. After the press conference, I will be sure to give you the web address. The easiest way to prove someone graduated from a certain school is to directly connect them to that school. LSE connected themselves to President Tsai when they congratulated her on their website after she was elected. The text is very clear. It states that the president received her PhD from LSE in 1984. The presidential office keeps referring back to the LSE webpage as solid proof that Tsai's degree is legitimate. But how much trust can be put into that website? LSE's disclaimer clearly states that the school cannot accept liability for the accuracy of all content at any given point in time. The first news stories published about LSE's online congratulatory message to Tsai pointed to a link on Shi Fangdong's Facebook. Shi touted the link as hard proof of Tsai's degree, much like the presidential office did. However, if we take a close look at the story in the link, we'll find something peculiar. In the article, an international relations professor, Christopher Hughes, praises Tsai for being the first female president in Asia. Furthermore, Hughes seems to go out of his way to emphasize that Tsai holds a PhD in law. But why couldn't someone from LSE's law department be the one to verify Tsai's degree? How come an international relations professor was the one to do so? What's even more interesting is, to this day, the LSE Department of Law has yet to publish any article about Tsai's presidency on their website. Doesn't this seem a little too strange? Under what circumstances can a law degree be verified by an international relations professor? Professor Xu Yongtai, who possesses a PhD from the University of Oxford, also made a shocking discovery. In his correspondence with the LSE Department of Law, he discovered that they did not have Tsai Ing-wen's information on file. This email is very important. This letter was written to me. What does this letter say? It's from LSE's Information and Records Office. It says that I can confirm that the Department of Law holds no records related to President Tsai. This proof might seem circumstantial, but sometimes circumstantial is very telling. This information comes from the school. How can the Department of Law not have information for someone who supposedly has a law degree from that school? It's unbelievable. This statement from LSE, published to their website on October 8, 2019, was placed on a page that hadn't been visited by anyone for two years. Furthermore, if one doesn't have a direct link to the statement's webpage, then it's very difficult to find. 
However, the presidential office fished out this link and had it on hand and ready to go when they needed it. They presented it as an important announcement from LSE. If it was so important, then why was it placed in such an inconspicuous spot? There are two takeaways from this online statement. First, according to records, Tsai Ing-wen was given a PhD in law in 1984. Second, the University of London's Senate House Library sent some kind of thesis to the school's Institute of Advanced Legal Studies Library. The statement omits key information such as the people, time, and place of certain occurrences. It doesn't even contain any sort of documentation. It simply wants to falsely establish that Tsai Ing-wen submitted a thesis and received a PhD in law from LSE in 1984. However, this online statement on LSE's website was quickly debunked by Dr. Huan Lin. One day, after it was brought to the public's attention, Dr. Lin contacted the University of London's library and presented them with the information within. This is what the library had to say. Senate House Library never received the original copies of this thesis from the external examiners. Later records indicate that a third copy was sent to Senate House Library in 2011, and this was then sent on to IALS. However, it would appear that since then, IALS have confirmed that they no longer have this copy. The statements disproved Tsai's claim that she submitted a thesis and received her doctorate in 1984. Furthermore, someone in 2011 tried to submit some version of a thesis into the IALS library. However, it was swiftly denied. Most shocking of all is the incorrect use of IALS's name. IALS is supposed to stand for Institute of Advanced Legal Studies. Here it was written as Institute for Advanced Legal Studies. This erroneous name can be found in one other place, Shi Fanglong's Facebook post on July 14th. Is this a coincidence? Both the University of London's External Affairs staff and LSE's Media Relations Office constantly defended Tsai. The former spoke up for Tsai's 2015 diploma, meanwhile the latter asserted that Tsai submitted a thesis. But everything that our investigative team found ran contrary to what these two offices said. Claims made by the presidential office and the LSE website were quickly debunked by our team. However, our analysis into these responses kept bringing us back to one person, Shi Fanglong. Tsai's team is constantly thinking of new ways to refute phony diploma accusations. The level of manipulation we've seen so far requires a strong network of people fostered over a long period of time. The most pivotal connection was made in 2007 with co-director of the Taiwan Research Program, Si Fang Long. The earliest mentions of LSE's Taiwan Research Program surfaced in 2007 during a report by the Education Ministry. It was part of a lecture program proposed by the ministry. Taiwan's education ministry provided partial funding to establish the Taiwan Research Program. However, in its seven years of existence, it didn't produce a single research paper. Two other lecturers, Taiwan sent to England, indeed produced research. So why was it that the LSC Taiwan Research Program could take money from the education ministry, yet not produce a single piece of work? Why didn't it need to offer any progress reports to Taiwan's legislature? What was the true purpose of the research program? It's important to point out here that Tsai Ing-wen was Taiwan's vice premier at the time. Aside from having no apparent purpose, the source of the Taiwan research program's funding was unclear and ambiguous at best. A few crafty netizens used the Freedom of Information Act to request details regarding donations LSE received. In 2018, the UK's Information Commissioner's Office publicized information on donations made to the London School of Economics before 2018. Information on 600 donations were brought to public light. The records clearly listed the purpose for each donation except for one, donation number 3631. Not only was this donation made anonymously, but it was gifted to a single person. The lucky recipient of this donation? 
Shi Fang Long. Shi supposedly received over 480,000 pounds. An anonymous donation made to a single person is standard money laundering behavior. But what kind of social science research project could possibly require such an astronomical amount of money? Also, why was the donated denomination so specific? Tsai Ing-wen was Taiwan's vice premier between January 25, 2006 and May 21, 2007. Donation number 3631's funds were to be made available on August 1, 2007, less than three months after Tsai left her post. At the time, the exchange rate between the new Taiwan dollar and the British pound was 62 to 1. The amount donated to Shu was 30 million new Taiwan dollars exactly. Furthermore, the donation was tax-exempt because it was donated to a supposed research project. The logical deduction here is that this money was appropriated from a clandestine diplomatic fund the government possessed. In 2019, legislator Apollo Chen questioned the Ministry of Education. The Education Ministry revealed that it budgeted roughly 2 million new Taiwan dollars for the LSE Taiwan Research Program. In that case, where did the remaining 28 million new Taiwan dollars come from? In her seven years at LSE, she failed to produce any academic research. It seems that her only purpose was to infiltrate the LSE communications offices. That way, she'd be able to control the flow of information from the inside out. Why does the LSE library not hold President Tsai's doctoral thesis? I think Alex made that very clear. President Tsai went through all of LSE's protocols to obtain her doctorate. That includes submitting a topic for her thesis, submitting her thesis, and passing her viva. LSE granted President Tsai a PhD for her efforts. It's probably not unusual for a thesis that was submitted 35-36 years ago to disappear. I think a student would need to think about the whereabouts of their work 35-36 years after the fact. Early on, Tsai's team tried to convince the public that her thesis was simply lost. Even the presidential office publicly announced this during a press conference. They even went so far as to say that the thesis had been submitted 35 years ago and that what becomes of it was no longer Tsai's responsibility. A select few diehard supporters believed this story. These initial claims did not stand up well to scrutiny. Dr. Juan Lin's correspondence with the University of London's Data Protection and Information Compliance Manager revealed that the entry for Tsai's thesis in the Ethos database was created in 2015. The database entry only contained a title and no content. The manager even said that others have tried to search for it before. Very clearly, Tsai did not lose her thesis. She just created a new one in 2015. Think of it this way. If the thesis were really lost, then how could the ethos entry be created in 2015? If it were lost, why create an empty database entry at all and leave traces of its existence? Additionally, why wouldn't someone hold a school accountable for losing their work? Tsai Ing-wen is suing former director of the Graduate Institute of Journalism at National Taiwan University, Dr. Dennis Peng, for defamation. Unperturbed, Dr. Peng traveled to the Institute of Advanced Legal Studies Library at the University of London on October 22, 2019. He asked the librarian point blank, was this thesis lost? The author, you want me to search by author? Yeah, T-S-A-I. Last name, T-S-A-I, 1984. What's the author's other name? Uh, uh, first name, um, I-N-G, uh, dash, W-E-N. No, it's not coming up by author either. Maybe um, her name was spelled in a different way. Yes, well, is this is right? our index of last names. Oh. And this is where TSI AI would be. Okay, so so uh, it was under that. Her last name is TSAI. So yeah, so her last name is TSAI. So we've searched for TSAI. This is what it took us into. But if we search for it, the name the other way around, we okay, can have a look. I got it. So this is the index of names beginning with ING. Mm -hmm. So the result shows so no. It looks match. like we don't have that one. I can try keyword search, which is a bit more flexible. Well, um, probably the title. Um, Unfair practices and safeguard actions. In so, and uh, safeguard actions. 
unfair trade practices. We we uh we miss a word. F R A D E S. What's it doing? Oh, it's thinking. No, it hasn't found anything. Got a lot of similar things, but not. Okay. Not all the words that we've got. See here, it says no results found. Mm -hmm. So it's trying unfair or trade or practices. Okay. So okay. It's like we don't have yeah, that one, I'm afraid. There must be a lot of unfair things. <laughs> yes. So. It looks like we don't have that one, unfortunately. Is it a University of London thesis? Uh, RSE, uh, yeah, it should be 1984. 1984. Yeah. So um, is it possible missing or... or, um, or just or maybe uh, we never received it. I don't know. If it was missing, it, if we had received it, it would be on the catalogue, but it would say missing. Oh. Um, but if it's just not there, it suggests that we never received it. Okay, so the, here is IARS library, right? Yeah, uh, so this is monthly Legal Studies, but LSE so library maybe should have a copy. Hmm. Is it possible there's somewhere in a different catalogue of uh, IARS? No, we only library. have one catalogue. Okay. So the answer is no? No, sorry. The answer is very simple. In any library around the world, never received and missing are two completely different things. So why did the presidential office say that the thesis went missing while the library said it had never received one? We don't know how many people the establishment has won over in England. For that matter, how many people at LSE have been bought off. However, this thesis mystery has been slowly stewing for the past decade. It's high time it boils over. An elusive degree in foggy London. It seems like the illusion of the century is far from over. However, this story must be seen through to the end. In 2011 and 2012, Tsai Ing-wen made a trip out to London herself. There, she met with two people who were connected to the scandal involving LFC and Muammar Gaddafi's son. What happened during that clandestine rendezvous? Once the fog clears, will we get a better picture? Next episode, Tsai asks an English parliamentarian to help her obtain a reissue. Stay tuned. was brought to you by Asian Cultural Alliance. Why are you late? This is too far. The office is too far. The government needs our people. The need will be heard. You two are right. 这光说有什么用呢？填好2020年的人口普查，就可以协助公共资金的分配。比如地方医疗，更多的政府席位，想要给自己发声啊，赶紧上网填，打电话也行。请上2020census.gov完成普查。